lies deep in the heart of West Texas. It's the James Hendrick Show. Coming to you, the SIB Superbity and Broadcast Network. You know, I was looking and among my network shows, and it's funny how my show is reaching number one. I didn't think my political show would beat out my personal development shows. I guess because I have a different flair in reporting on what's going on in, in, in politics. And today we're going to be talking about Biden's masterpiece of shame. Okay? Now, two stories, and these are from One America News. Uh, the first one is Senate Foreign Relations Committee looking at mother of all sanctions against Russia. <laughs> I mean, come on. I just got through listening to part of Newsmax Daily by Rob Carson. Yeah, uh, I bet I know why the Senate Foreign Relations Committee is debating that. Because Kamala Harris gave a condemnatory uh, statement against Russia, and, and rightfully so, for wanting to, to invade Ukraine. I mean, who does Putin think he is? <laughs> uh, Joseph Stalin? Vladimir Lenin? Tell me! <laughs> and so, you know, I don't know that much about foreign policy. I did take a course in comparative foreign policy, but my term paper in that course was about Egypt and the Middle East. And I, I gotta tell you, I think I ruffled my professor's feathers until he, I discovered he was in Washington, D.C. on 9-11. And so I contacted the Texas Tech Department of Political Science and asked them to find out for me whether the professor was okay. You know, because, you know, whether you agree with a person or not, they are a human being, okay? With just as much rights to opinions as, as we have, okay? So, you say, but Jimmy, why would... The Senate Foreign Relations Committee act on the wishes of the Vice President. Uh, look at the Constitution. Look at your Constitution. The Vice President is the top president. He or she presides over the Senate, okay? And no, I'm not opposed to a woman vice president. I'm not opposed to a woman president as long as they have correct uh, principles and, and, and values to guide them. Okay. And I'm, uh, I'm unsure about the uh, the uh, uh, Biden-Harris alliance, to tell you the truth. I've had reasons to be suspicious for quite some time. But anyway, here's another story. Uh, also on One American News, um, Biden apologizes to a reporter for calling him an SOB. All right, give him a minute, and I'll give you my perspective. Peter Ducey, God bless him. Asked Biden a question about uh, inflation. Was it reactive? Yes. Does that give Biden the right to call him an SOB? No. It gives him no right whatsoever. All right, listen to me. Journalism has died on the wayside, as far as I'm concerned, in both parties. They're, they're not interested in the truth. 
I mean, listen to me. I took, I took two years. Actually, if you count some of the basics in community college, four years studying broadcast journalism. And what I learned in university about journalism really made my skin crawl. I was like, you know, I want to study a field that, that, that suits my interest, but is in the pursuit of the truth. So I, I switched over to uh, political science. And so as your consultant, as your researcher, I have to say this. Okay, maybe Peter Ducey shouldn't have asked a question in the way he did. But that's, that gives no, Joe Biden no right, our president no right to do that, okay? He is in, he's, he's engaging in behaviors that's unbecoming of our commander-in-chief. All right? Maybe in the privacy of the Oval Office, but not, not in front of reporters for Pete's sake. I, I have a decorum as far as speaking on stage and the like. And many of you know what it is. Th that decorum is no cursing on stage. It's, it, I tell people, I tell people that, you know, no cursing on stage. It's, it's unprofessional. And it's, it's unbecoming. And, you know, it was good last night to take a break from the reactive culture and from talking about politics. Last night I had a, let me get the name of the restaurant off of the uh, root beer cup to go that I took. Because I want to be able to give you guys, if it's anywhere around the country or even if you're in the middle of Odessa area, go there. I'm serious. They make some of the best seafood you could ask for. The name of the place is Hook and Reel. Excellent, excellent place. And I had a wonderful meal. I had the uh, uh, flounder basket. Excellent. And it gave me some ideas for some of my personal development podcasts. Because that's more my emphasis than politics. I do do a, a daily political show, but my view on politics has changed. I mean, I'm not saying that my values, my conservative values has changed. What has changed since the death of Rush Limbaugh is that I'm seeing that less and less people that are into the talk space are taking a proactive stance. And I blame our education system. We're training people to look at problems, not finding a way to solve problems. Oh, sure, math problems and the like like that, but not to solve uh, problems. And so... Kamala Harris had to issue a statement on Ukraine. I correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, correct me, okay? If if you if you see me on on this on on YouTube, uh, please, please leave a comment. You know, you know, um, you know I'm, I'm sorry, you're you're dead wrong. He did issue a statement, but I think our commander in chief, who's in charge of our military, should be out there more talking about it. But I think he's scared. I think he's just scared being, uh, you know, caught with his pants down because of his um, ties to Burisma. And it's kind of like, Mommy, the Emperor is naked. You know? You, you got Emperor Joe, Princess, uh, 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 Princess Pelosi, um, Duchess Kamala and v Vice President Fauci. And it seems like California is doing whatever it can to follow Viceroy uh, Fauci. Neglecting parents' rights. I'm sorry that I, you know, 
I have to be honest with you. Guys, we can do better. We can do better. Like Rush Limbaugh, I'm going to say the same thing Rush Limbaugh said years ago. The only limitations that are set are the ones that you impose. So it's time for us as Americans to stand up. It's time that it us uh, men, patriots like me, Christians like me, to man up. I'll tell you something. I really enjoyed myself at dinner last night. And it was like God was giving me the space to come up with uh, um, ideas for some of my other podcasts. Now, it seems like every morning he gets me ideas from other political podcasts. But for some reason, I hit a dry spell in my personal development. Well, and I think a lot of it is uh, the reactive culture can get to the best of us. It really can. You know, people trying to muddy the waters, get people scared and upset. Look, I'm going to give you this proactive piece of advice, and I haven't given you proactive advice in a while, and I apologize. Look in the, look to your home lo, uh, locality, your, your, your districts. Look after your states. Okay? Defend your rights to freedom, and don't you dare give in. All right, understand? Because I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something right now. Guys, do we want to continue another four years of Biden's masterpiece of shame? I don't think he can make it through 2024. That's just being honest. If he does, it's a miracle. And, you know, you got the Clintons saying they're fighting for the soul of the Democratic Party and for America. But our options are these two in order to get rid of liberalism. It's either we get Trump out there or we get some new blood like, like DeSantis. I happen to like DeSantis. Either way. Now, I know some people don't like Trump because of some things that they've seen on the media. I'm just being plain honest with you. I don't believe half the crap that's out there with journalists today. Now, oops. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hope you enjoy listening to the James Hendricks Show. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and receive most daily updates. This is Jimmy Hendricks saying, until next time, stay proactively informed, take care, and God bless you.